You are Cadence, daughter of a missing treasure hunter, and you're on a mission to save him. During your search, you fall into the crypt of the nefarious Necrodancer, who steals your heart and challenges you to delve deep into his labyrinthine home and defeat his minions, before eventually confronting the Necrodancer and winning back your vital organ. But there is a catch. The Necrodancer controls your heart now and makes it beat in time with his own sinister rhythm. To survive, you must move in time with the beat of the music and the beating of your heart. This is Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I'm Tiger, and this is a Hyper Review. Crypt of the Necro Dancer is a procedurally generated, top-down, 2D rhythm action dungeon crawler, and while that might seem like a little bit of a confusing mouthful, it works remarkably well. The gameplay is fun, well-paced, and relatively unique among the other games I've played, especially in the rhythm genre. Everything that the player does, from moving around the levels of the crypt to attacking enemies and interacting with the environment, is controlled by pressing the WASD keys in time with the beat of a music track. Acting in sync with the beat ensures the effectiveness of the player's actions and increases their score multiplier, while breaking the rhythm not only sets your multiplier back to zero, but generally results in action failure, leaving you exposed to an attack from the crypt's monstrous denizens. Using this movement system, you need to find and defeat the mini-boss on each floor, eventually making your way to the final boss of the level. Given that Crypt of the Necro Dancer is a game with music and rhythm at its core, you'd be forgiven for expecting it to not really be too accessibility friendly, but it actually puts a lot more effort into this area than you might expect. The developers have clearly thought about deaf and hard of hearing gamers, as the rhythm that the player needs to keep in time with is given a visual representation in the form of equally spaced lines that move towards Cadence's heart, located prominently in the bottom centre of the screen, where each beat coincides with the bars entering the heart. The game also includes full subtitles, not just for cutscenes, but for in-game moments as well, and there is a wide variety of languages available. Another potential area of concern is that the game has such a phenomenal number of items and monsters and characters that players with some mental illnesses or learning difficulties may have trouble taking it all in. Happily, this is overcome in a number of ways. Players can opt to display or hide information such as item names, tooltips, enemy hearts, and reminders to spend resetting currency, which is excellent for those with memory or executive function disorders. There's also an area where players can test out various weapons and attempt to formulate strategies for dispatching different enemies, allowing them to work out the game's mechanics without the potential pressure of being in an actual session of the game. Aside from this, other accessibility factors have been taken into account as well. For instance, the controls can be fully customised, and the game offers controller support for those who find keyboards difficult to contend with. Players with motion sensitivity, epilepsy, or similar issues have also been taken into account, as effects like the screen shake and the disco floor can be disabled. Diversity within the game is also something that seems to have been quite important to the developers, and although the story exists really only as a way to motivate the player to push through the levels, it's useful to note that it's important from a non-gameplay perspective, allowing the game to invert tropes such as introducing a female character only to have them become the motivation for some angsty dude. In Crypt of the Necro Dancer, we instead play as a foolhardy heroine who is out to rescue a dude, her father. Aside from the primary character being female by default, the player also has the option to switch between skin tones and, if they absolutely want to, can make their player character male in the options. There's also a host of other characters to unlock, with a gender split favouring female characters over male ones, and these new characters don't simply unlock new skins, but also new gameplay modes. For instance, unlocking Cadence's grandmother, Arya, grants access to the game's second hardest mode, wherein you have one heart container and will die if you miss even one beat. The game has also had a great interaction with my ADHD, and although I can't lose an entire afternoon playing it like I could with Pokemon or Kingdom Hearts, I do find myself coming back again and again to beat my old scores and unlock more content. This is helped by a few factors. 
firstly, as I said before, there are a lot of game modes that the player can choose from, and even more characters to unlock, each giving their own unique gameplay twist on the modes that they can participate in. The stages of the game are procedurally generated, which means that the risk of me simply memorising the stages, developing a muscle memory of what I have to do and autopiloting through the whole experience is negated, and each playthrough allows you to collect currency to upgrade the items you can collect in your playthroughs, giving more meaning to continued effort. What are potentially the most exciting counters to my ADHD though, are the fact that not only can you use your own music files in the game, meaning that with a large enough music library, the game could potentially stay fresh indefinitely, but that you aren't restricted to playing with your hands. If you happen to own a USB dance pad, then you can play with your legs and feet, which is really exciting for somebody with ADHD, like, for reals. This game wants me to expend my fidgety energy, like how freaking awesome is that? So ultimately, I know that Crypt has been around for a while. It originally came out in 2013 after all, but it wasn't until earlier this year that it was released on the PS4, and then halfway through this year it was released again on iOS. So if you enjoy rhythm action games or procedurally generated content, then there really isn't much of an excuse to not pick this up. Have you played Crypt of the Necro Dancer yet? What kind of music do you like to use when you play it? I'll see you all next week, okay I love you, bye bye!